Hey guys, John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel once again. In today's video, we're checking out the new PV6505 1992 original. And oh boy, I'm excited because who doesn't love the good old 6505? And before we dive in, let's take a listen to some heavy riffs that I wrote with my ESP LTD NW44 through the lead channel of the 6505. Check it out. That sounded great, pretty chunky indeed. So, the PV6505 1992 original, the newly revised and updated version of the classic 6505. Quick note up front, PV did send me this amplifier to feature on the channel and I do get to keep the amp, but I'm not getting paid any money, but you can consider this a sponsored video because of that. But as always, all thoughts and opinions are 100% my own. I guess back in 1992, this whole thing started back when PV released the first version of the 5150 in collaboration with Eddie Van Halen. And that was the original block letter version, that highly sought after collectible version of this amplifier. And that OG block letter version of the amplifier has reached quite a legendary status by now, and I'm sure you've all heard of it. And when Eddie eventually went his own way, the name of the amplifier got changed to the 6505, keeping all the core sounds intact. So everything we know and love about the 5150 still remains with the 6505. Now over the years, components got updated and things changed a little bit inside of the amplifier, as well as the overall design of the amps. In the more recent 6505 amplifiers, the output transformers were different than the original version, for example. And since a lot of people hold that original block letter version of the 5150 in such high regard, they went back to those original designs and checked out all the components and compared it to the current versions. And they basically went and updated the design to make it as close as possible to the original block letter 5150. So the output transformers got an update and other components as well. And not only the inside of the amplifier, but also the outside got an update, as you can see. The amp looks much closer to the original block letter now with the 6505 logo up here and also with the original PV logo back there. And I like this new old school look quite a bit. It looks really awesome. So iconic and classic basically. Some other changes to the design was that the power cable is now detachable. With the previous versions it was attached to the amplifier and you could not remove it. And now you can just take it off as with any other amplifier which is better for storage and for moving the amp around. And now there's also a voltage selector on the back, which is very cool and it allows you to use this amplifier with various voltages from various countries and stuff. So now you can use this thing all around the world without needing external gear to change the power. You just change the voltage on the back and you're good to go. Now this amplifier has six L6 tubes in the power section. It's a 120 watt amplifier. But now apparently you can also change those 6L6s to EL34s 
as long as you use tubes that are in the right or correct range. But don't quote me on that. Now, eventually, I will do a comparison of this new 6505 1992 original versus my previous standard 6505. And that will be interesting because maybe there will be some sonic changes. But for now, I can safely say that this amplifier sounds absolutely awesome. It sounds huge and chunky, as you probably heard in the intro track. And those tracks were inside of a mix, but I did not use any processing to enhance the guitars. Only a low cut and around 80 hertz to make some room for the kick drum and the bass guitar. Nothing else. So this amplifier does stand very tall inside of a full mix without a lot of enhancements, basically. You just need to hook it up to a great cabinet and you're good to go. Now let's take a very quick look at the old and familiar control layout. On the left side, we have the high and low gain input and then the channel selector switch, then the gain control for the rhythm channel, which also has a bright switch and a crunch switch for more gain. And this channel is highly underrated in my opinion. I just love the tones that you can get out of this channel from cleans all the way up to high gain, really fat sounding high gain basically. But you hear some tones of that channel in a minute. And then we have the gain control for the lead channel as well as the shared three band EQ. Then master controls for both the channels and the resonance and presence controls. Pretty simple, right? So it's very easy to get some amazing tones out of this amplifier with very little effort. Okay, so let's see how this amplifier sounds and let's start with some clean tones on the rhythm channel with the bright switch turned on and with the gain set quite low but with a little bit of breakup going on, so it's a pushed clean, basically. I'm using my ESP LT Phoenix Deluxe 1000 Evertune with the Fishman Fluence Modern pickups in it, on the Alnico neck pickup, on the active voicing, and I'm also using my Laney reverb pedal inside of the effects loop. Now for all the clips in this demo, the amp is being fed into my Red 7 amplification amp central reactive load, and then into Ownhammer impulse responses from the Essential series, and all the IRs will be noted during the segments. Okay, let's check it out right now. So that's a quite nice pushed clean tone. I like it a lot and I think it sounds great. Sure, this channel sounds a little bit flat, but it's a great sounding channel if you combine it with some great sounding pickups. Okay, now let's set the rhythm channel to the crunch mode for more gain. And let's try a thick rock tone using my Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s with the Duncan JB in the bridge position. And now you'll get to hear why I love this channel so much for rock. It just sounds so thick, rich and fat. Check it out.
Oh yeah. So like I said, I think that the rhythm channel is highly underrated for gain tones, especially for high gain tones. And you can even make it sound very tight and aggressive for metal, for example, if you put a boost up front. Really nice. Okay, now let's move on to the lead channel, the most popular channel of this amplifier, of course. And you also got to hear that channel in the intro with a passive metal tone. And now I want to try some metal riffs with some active pickups. And for that purpose, I'm going to use my Fender Jimru Telecaster on the bridge pickup, which is an EMG 81. Let's check it out. Awesome. I'm really loving those tones. It sounds so classic, but so thick and huge. And those tones really stand very tall in a mix, which is basically why I love the 6505 so much. Now I want to try something a bit extended range and go a bit lower. And for that purpose, I'm going to use my ESP LTD SC607B1H, the purple Stefan Carpenter signature model, the seven string baritone with the Steph Fishman Fluence pickup in it. And that guitar is tuned to drop a flat. And for this tone, I'm going to use the famous 666 settings. And that means that I'll put the bass, mids and treble all at six. Let's check it out. Amazing! So this amplifier sounds very good with lower tunings as well. And we're not using any boost pedals in this video at all. So it really works well for these types of tones, especially with active pickups and stuff like that. And to be honest, it's not really surprising that this amplifier sounds great because, I mean, a 6505 or a 5150 just sounds awesome and we all know it, right? Okay, now I want to loop some riffs that I played with my Gibson Les Paul Custom and then I'm going to tweak all the controls so you guys can hear how they respond and how they sound. Check it out.
Great, so that was the PV6505 1992 original. I'm super stoked about this amplifier and I'm super happy that I got to feature it on the channel. Thanks to PV Amplification for sending this over to me. I really appreciate it. And also thanks to Face for helping me out with this. Now there definitely is something special about this version of the 6505 and it's kind of hard to put my finger on it, but I am noticing it. It's just a very good sounding amplifier. I really love this thing. And as a bonus, it also looks really cool and definitely really classic as well. Definitely check out these new versions of the 6505 and for more information, visit the PV website. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this amplifier. And also hit the like and subscribe buttons down below as that really helps the channel out. I'd hugely appreciate that. It really helps. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you guys so much and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.